What's up guys, it's Summer and today we are going to learn how to make green water for those juicy juicy Daphnia. Daphnia is one of the best live food that you can culture at home. They're packed full of antioxidants and they help the fish with digestion. So it's no secret that they are the first choice when it comes to raising your own food at home. I think the biggest issue people have is actually getting green water. Which is kind of ironic because it's one of those things where when you want them, you can't get them, and when you don't want them, they're like a plague. So what is the secret? Raising fish outdoors. The most common freshwater green algae that you see that makes up green water is a species of cholera. Not to be confused with cholera, because uh, that's the one that gives you a bad time in the bathroom. From my experience, cholera likes to have a certain type of water parameter. First, they seem to like hard, high carbonate water over acidic water. Here in Southern California, my water is pretty hard and pretty basic, coming out with a TDS of around 300. So I just simply use that. Second, they like high intensity, long duration light. This is why in the summertime, you tend to get green water because the light intensity is a lot more higher and the duration is a lot longer. And lastly, you're gonna need a source of nitrogen. And this is where the fish is going to come into play. Any food that the fish consume will be converted to ammonia via its waste. And Corella, being an algae, is going to use the nitrogen as a building block for its growth. The high level of nitrogen is also why if you throw in a bunch of fertilizer in water, you can actually get green water. If you ever notice that a lot of stagnant polluted ponds tend to have green water, the water has an excess in nutrients and the system is simply trying to balance itself out. Something similar is happening in your outdoor fish tub. The system has an excess of nutrients of one type and so an organism grows to fill in that gap. And because we don't have plants, the algae takes its place. Usually green water would appear on its own given the correct condition. The spores are airborne and they'll most likely make it to your tub. However, if you are struggling to get green water, you can probably use your tank water because it most likely have the spores. I like to keep my fish in these tall 50 gallon tub. This is for a specific reason. Southern California sunlight can be really intense and it could bring the water temperature up to 90 degrees. So by having a tall fish tub, I can ensure that the water at the bottom stays a lot cooler. This way, if the fish feel stressed from the heat, they can simply swim down and stay where they are a lot more comfortable. So what kind of fish should you raise outdoors? Because of the changing conditions, you need to find a fish with high heat tolerance. And that also does well in harder water. The best and most logical choice would be guppies. Another good choice would be rice fish, like daisy rice fish or medecas. And my personal favorite and often overlooked, paradise fish. These guys can be pretty much raised outdoor year round and they make some of the greenest green water. By the way, you can also get these on my online store. Shameless self-emotion, I know. So how long does it take to get that juicy green water? In direct sunlight, it takes about one or two days to get green and a week to get really green. Because I have multiple tubs running, I tend to harvest them from the older tubs after about two weeks. The greener the water, the better. Not only for your Daphnia, but also for your fish too. Okay, so some tips on raising Daphnia indoors. I like to raise them in 20 gallon tanks, but you can go bigger or smaller. Keep in mind that the smaller your tank, the more often you have to do water change. I run an airstone to circulate the water, and I pour in some green water and take out some of the old water. The amount I take out is about a gallon or two. Yes, this is something that people often overlook, is that you need to do water change. Daphnia grows really fast and they do produce waste. And they also tend to shed their skin. This exoskeleton often piles up on the bottom of the tank, creating this sticky muck. You leave this sticky muck in the tank long enough and it will trigger a dormancy period in the Daphnia tank and cause it to crash. What you need to do is every couple of days, you need to vacuum the bottom of this tank. If you want to have a high density population, this is the secret right here. Okay, that's going to be it guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it on the comments below. Thanks for watching. By the way guys, if you do need Daphnia, I do sell them on my website. Links are in the description below. Thanks.